Hello and welcome back. So today I'm going to be talking to you about the Nikon Z 180 to 600 millimeter lens. Now I've had this lens for well over a month now at this stage and I've been delaying putting up this review and today I'm going to tell you why. I will be talking to you through image quality, AF speed, distortion, vignetting, as well as focal breathing, sharpness, and a few more things. And I'm also going to be talking about whether this lens will actually make it into my camera bag or not. So come on, let's get into it and I'll walk you through it and talk you through it. Firstly, I just want to say I have this review broken into chapters, so please do feel free to skip forward to the chapter that you're most interested in. So let's start with the unboxing of this beast, and this is a video I recorded well over a month ago now at this stage. Look at the size of this box. So having, having checked the dimensions online, I'm assured it's going to be dramatically smaller than this, but just when I saw the size of the box, my initial reaction was, I'm definitely going to be needing a bigger camera bag. <laughs> I am hoping, yes, I am hoping there is a smaller section on top. So this presumably now is either carrying the, yeah, the lens hood, which is a monster. That is a monster of a lens hood, but obviously enough, it would need to be, and there's a very fine carrying bag just by the size of it, it's not going to be very thick. It's not going to offer an awful lot of protection, but there is a carrying bag, bag coming with it. And here is the lens itself. That's more or less what I was expecting size-wise. I'm going to move the box down here. Let's have a look and see. Okay. So, first things first. It's not as big as the box would leave you, lead you to believe, thankfully. Nice size of a lens, really nice. Look at the, look at the front lens element in that. That is, wow, 95 mil. But a real beauty this lens is too as well, it's not one of those pop out lenses. When you zoom in and zoom out, it's all done internally. So this is gonna be the full length of the camera body. But the one thing we'll say to you is, it is heavy. There's a bit of weight in this. And out of curiosity, I'm going to grab my 70 to 200. So this is my 70 to 200 f 2.8, and as you can see, there is still a sizable size difference between the two of them. But that is to be expected. But hey, Kieran, what's so good about this lens? Well, the first thing you have to look at is its price, and for the price of this lens, you are getting an awful lot of lens for your money. This has to be the best value Z series lens out there. It is a chunky, beautiful looking lens. And for the price, I think it's a steal. I genuinely do. Because it's so cheap, a lot of you might be thinking the build quality isn't going to be fantastic because this is not an S series lens. And I have to say, I'm lucky enough to have quite a few S series lenses. And in all honesty, you would hardly notice the difference between this and an S series lens. This is built, in, in, in my mind, to the same standard as an S-series lens. As in when you open it out of the box and when you play with it for a while, this is a really good quality lens. So from a build quality point of view, I honestly couldn't fault this lens. Okay, so we've got a good price, we've got great build quality, but how could the optics or the image quality possibly be any good out of this lens? And that's the crazy part. And that's why I think this lens is absolutely fantastic. The image quality from this lens is incredibly good. And I'm going to get into that in a small bit more detail in a couple of seconds, but I just want to say, for the price and the quality you're getting out of this, this is unbelievable value for money, considering the focal length range this lens covers. So this brings us to how sharp is it? And personally, what I found is anything from 180 up to 300 millimeters is incredibly good. In all honesty, it is incredibly good. And I, for one, am very, very happy with it. So this photograph was shot at 300 millimeters. And these are the sort of results you can expect to get from this lens. Once you go from 300 to 500, it does soften just ever so fractionally, but in all fairness, the results you're still getting are amazing. So once you go over 500 millimeters then, the image quality does soften that small little fraction again. But 
it is still incredibly good. And I'm shooting this on my Nikon Z8, which is a 46 megapixel high resolution image. So I'm gonna be zooming in at 100 or 200% looking at sharpness details, which possibly a lot of people out there mightn't be doing. But the other beauty of this is, what you have to remember is, when you're shooting at 600 mil, you probably don't need to crop that mightily much. So that is another massive consideration. This photograph was taken at 600 millimeters, and as you can see, it's really sharp still. This photograph was also taken at 600 millimeters, and again, these are the sort of results you can expect. These images are both uncropped. And speaking of cropping, you can also further enhance the zoom range on this lens by using a teleconverter. So if you have a 1.4 or 2x teleconverter, you can use it on this lens. And yes, I did try my 2x teleconverter on this lens, shooting at 1200 millimeter, and the results were fractionally soft. But the results were soft for a few different reasons. Firstly, the 2x teleconverter isn't going to help your image sharpness. And secondly, at 600 mil, it is just going to get that tiny fraction soft again. But please do remember that is 1200 millimeters. These are two separate photographs of the moon. The one on the left was shot at 600 millimeter and has been cropped. It's now a 12 megapixel image. The image on the right is an uncropped 46 megapixel image shot at 1200 millimeter on the 180 to 600 with the two by teleconverter. And as you can see, the 600 millimeter image is sharper. Even though it's low resolution, it is sharper. Crazy stuff. One of the absolutely amazing things about this lens, as far as I'm concerned, for people starting off in wildlife photography or sports photography even, is the fact that you can vary from 180 millimeter to 600 millimeters by simply turning the zoom ring less than 90 degrees. That is huge. If you're starting off in something like wildlife photography and trying to capture a bird in flight and you're zoomed in at four or five or 600 millimeter, it's very easy to lose track of that bird. Whereas you can just quickly flick back to 100 80, find where it is and then zoom back in along again. So that has to be one of the reasons why I absolutely love this lens and I highly recommend it for anyone starting off into wildlife photography. Now as I'm speaking about zooming in on birds, the one thing I should talk to you about here too as well is this lens does have VR. So notice if you switch the VR on in your camera, it will actually help to stabilize this lens. And even at 600 millimeter and hand holding this lens, the image was very, very stable. And again, speaking of hand holding the lens, it is very possible to hand hold this lens for periods of time with even like so the Z8 or the Z9 camera. The lens is, is reasonably heavy. It's about two kgs roughly. And with the Z8, it kind of balances out fairly well, but a good monopod or a really good tripod is seriously going to help you here too as well. So that brings us to distortion and vignetting. And is there an issue with this lens with distortion? Well, not really. There is a very slight and very slight amount of pincushion distortion in this lens, but it seems to be fairly consistent across all focal lengths and it's very easy to sort out in post-processing. So I genuinely wouldn't consider distortion to be an issue on this lens. Vignetting again is something that's practically non-existent on this lens and something I wouldn't even consider an issue in any way, shape or form. So this brings us to corner sharpness and just how sharp are the corners on this lens. What I personally found is, again, going from 180 to 300, corner sharpness is really good. Going from 300 to 500, it does soften fractionally. But again, stopping down the lens seems to eliminate that problem. Going from 500 to 600, as I mentioned before, sharpness does take a slight, slight hit all over the image, so it's gonna affect the corner sharpness just fractionally more. But again, stopping the lens down then again is going to help there. Looking at the design of the Z180-600 then, I have to say that having the, both the zoom and the focus all being done internally in the body, so the lens doesn't pop out to zoom or to focus, is gonna help with weather sealing, and it's also going to help with weight distribution when you're taking your shot. Because as your lens elements are literally moving further up beyond the body, it's gonna change your center of gravity in the lens. And yes, I know they are changing fractionally inside, but it's not going to throw your tripod off balance as easily. Now, one of the issues I thought I was gonna have with this lens was going to be lens flare. But surprisingly enough, I've shot this in a lot of adverse weather conditions 
and it has kept lens flare nearly completely under control. So staying with lens design, I have to mention there are four lens FN or function buttons on this lens. As you can see, they're positioned just beyond the zoom ring. So there's one, two, three, and four. Now, the only criticism I'd have of this lens is I think they're just a bit too far up the lens barrel. It would be handier if they were a small bit further back because this could just be completely personal. But when I'm shooting and if I'm shooting handheld and firing off my shots, the first thing I'll do is I literally just rotate the tripod collar out of the way. I'm firing off my shots and when I'm holding the lens to balance it, you'll actually see my thumb can't reach that. So I have to put it slightly off position and then I can reach it. It's just a minor criticism and it is incredibly handy having those lens FN buttons, but it's the only thing I can actually really find wrong with this lens. Speaking of tripod collars, this tripod collar is a different design, but it is still incredibly easy to use. All you do is open this little thumb wheel here and you can actually rotate this so you can put the camera into whatever orientation you want, tighten it up again, and that's it, you're done. The other handy thing then too as well, of course, is you have two mounting screws. So if you're gonna use a long Arca Swiss plate, you can use two mounting screws to hold the lens in place for added security due to the weight. So this is bringing us to autofocus speed. And this is, in all honesty, one of the areas I was really concerned about how well this lens was going to perform. Purely because of the focal length involved and the mechanics of focusing across that entire focal length, how well and how quickly is going to be able to manage it, and also how good was the focus going to be. So the first thing is focus speed. And I have to say, this lens is a lot faster than I thought it was going to be. As you can see from that video, the camera focus between the camera bag and the landscape behind very quickly. And that was really impressive. It was also very positive when it locked on to as well. And it's one of the first things that struck me about this lens. I've been using this lens for photographing birds in flight and the results I've had have been surprisingly good. And even the last day I went out in incredibly high winds, it was still very easy to get an awful lot of those shots in focus. The photographs I'm taking here now with the 180 to 600 if this lens can do this, it's an absolute cracker. I'm going to go back to the studio and look at the photographs. Now, none of these photographs are beautiful, but it's not about beauty here. This is about going out, taking photographs in extremely windy conditions. Conditions that you can barely even stand in, being honest with you. Really trying to track a bird in flight in those conditions is going to be incredibly difficult. The 180 to 600 zoom range meant if I lost a bird in flight, I could quickly zoom out, find it, and nail the shot then again afterwards. Shooting at 600 mil, there was no problem whatsoever nailing focus and getting the shot. Now, one of the things that really shocked me about this lens is the focus breeding, or should I say, the lack of focus breeding. If we look back in that video again there now, when you see the focus shifting between the landscape, which is a mile away, literally over a mile away, to the camera bag itself, there is little to no focus breeding in that. That is exceptional. Shooting at 600 millimeter, for there to be that little focus breeding, that is opening out a whole world of possibilities for videographers and cinematographers, especially people really interested in shooting wildlife videos. This lens is brilliant. This now brings us to size. And this is one of the reasons why I was delaying putting up this video. And it might seem a small bit mad, but please stick with me for a second, because this is a really big lens. And this is a lens that's not gonna fit into a lot of camera bags. And when you're putting it into your camera bag, you're gonna be organizing your camera bag around this lens. So the problem with that is, I'm, I'm always and firmly of the belief, the best camera lens you have is the one you've with you. And you could have this camera lens at home, but if it's not there, it's no good to you. What I used to generally do before is I would bring out my 70 to 200, that was nearly always in my camera bag, and I'd have my two by teleconverter. So that would bring me from 140 up to 400 in, which is generally kind of good enoughish. I could always crop in along the small bit because of the fact that I was shooting on a 46 megapixel camera. Is it as good as the 600? Definitely not, no. Now, I would highly recommend this lens to anyone. This lens is absolutely amazing. It's as simple as that. I have no regrets whatsoever from buying it, but I just wanted to point out, this is something you're gonna make a conscious decision on from day to day, will I bring it with me? So just please do remember that. In conclusion then, I have to say this lens is amazing. It is unbelievable value for money. 
it is really, really great for anyone starting out in wildlife photography or sports photography. That ability just to be able to zoom backwards and forwards with a 90 degree throw of the zoom ring is fantastic for helping you to recompose your subject or even find your subject again. So the conclusion for this review has to be the Nikon Z180-600mm to 600 millimeter lens is by far and away the best value Z series lens from Nikon out there right now. The build quality is really good and the optics considering the price are exceptional. I highly recommend it. I've loved using it but as I mentioned before it won't always be in my camera bag purely because of its size and its weight. So it is something to bear in mind. Just two quick little things before we go. The first is if you're interested in me doing a far more detailed review on this lens going into image quality, going into corner sharpness, vignetting, distortion, whatnot, please do let me know in the comments down below and I'll sort that out over the next few weeks. The second thing then is, are you interested in buying this lens? Have you used the lens or is there another lens you would say is a lot better than the Z180 to 600mm lens? I'd love to hear your thoughts on it, so please do let me know in the comments down below. Until the next video, see you out there and mind yourselves.